Hi, this is Rose, and today's tutorial is going to cover how to take a length or angle measurement in Slicer. So this is a very simple and quick task, but I'm also going to go over some tips and visualization tricks along the way that can help you in the future. So I've loaded a volume into Slicer, as you can see in these three different perspectives here, and I've turned on the volume rendering. So this is always a good way to start your data collection to get a quick reminder of what your scan actually looks like. So now I'm going to turn off that rendering and navigate to the data module. And here we're going to turn on the visualization for the skull. So I've prepared a model of a skull for us to practice taking our measurements on today. And if you want to learn how to do these first few preparation steps, just check out some of the other tutorials from our lab. So this is the point where you typically begin taking your length or angle measurement in your data collection. So let's just jump in. We're going to navigate to the markups module, which you can do by clicking on that icon or using the main drop down menu. Before you start, you want to orient your model into position so that you can clearly see the area where you want to take a length measurement. And then you can click on this icon to maximize that 3D viewer screen. So we're going to take a length measurement of the frame and magnum from the points Bayesian to Epistheon. So when you're ready, you simply select the line icon and then rename it something distinctive so you can tell it apart from your other measurements. So I'll just rename it by double clicking and call this tutorial line. So now you'll place your two coordinate points that are going to make up your line, which are going to show up in this space below. So when you move your cursor back to the 3D viewer, your landmarks are going to glow green until you click and place that landmark on your first point, and then it changes colors. So here I'm just going to roughly place Bayesian and Epistheon to get a measurement of that frame and magnum length. And you want to move your model back and forth to check your placement of those points, and you can adjust them even after you place them by just clicking and dragging. But another thing you can do is click this icon to jump back to that three slice perspective and you can see your points on your volume and adjust them in this space as well. And when you click on a landmark in this perspective, every single view jumps to that landmark so you can adjust it from every view. So now we'll navigate back to that 3D viewer by clicking on the same icon. And I'll just remind you that you can zoom in as much as you want to make sure that you're placing those points as accurately as possible in specific places on the skull. So I'm just doing this roughly to demonstrate, but you really want to take care in this part of the process because it'll affect your final measurements and it'll affect your length accuracy. So you can rename your two points by double clicking on them in that left side menu. So I'll name this one Bayesian and you can toggle on and off the visibility of that point. And then I'll rename the second one Epistheon. And you can find the length of your line in two places, in the description section at the top or under the measurements drop down menu below. So I'll close that control point section, open the measurements section, and it's there as well. You can also change the color of your line by selecting this icon to the right of the eye icon and choose any new color you'd like. And you can also toggle on and off the visibility of your line, not just the individual points, by using that eye icon as well. So now we're going to cover how to take an angle measurement. It's a very similar process that, uh, to the one we just went through. You want to orient your model, click angle instead of line, and then we'll be placing coordinate points. So I'm going to first orient that model, this time into a posterior perspective, so I can take the point lambda on the back of the skull. And we're going to create an angle including the line we just took between Bayesian and Epistheon. So for this, we'll need to take, of course, three points to create an angle instead of the two to create a line. So we'll just click Angle and then rename it. This is just a good habit to get in to keep your data organized. And now we'll move into the 3D viewer. You can see that your landmark glows green until you place that point at Lambda. Now, the other two points of our angle we've already taken, so I'm going to pause here for a second and show you one trick that I use all the time. So to stop taking points, you either right-click or click that cursor icon at the top of the screen. And I'm going to rename Lambda. And then I'm going to go back to that line we created under Tutorial Line, 
and select both of our points and copy them. So you can do that by pressing Command C or by right clicking and selecting copy. Then we'll just navigate back to our angle, right click and select paste. So right now this angle we've created, it goes from lambda to bezion to epistheon, but I want it to be lambda to epistheon to bezion. So you can actually change the order of your points by expanding the advanced menu below and using these icons to either move your point up or down the list. So now our angle is between lambda, epistheon, and bezion, with epistheon being that vertex midpoint. So let's visualize this quickly. I'm going to change the color of that angle we just created and navigate to the models module. Select the skull model that we already have and adjust that opacity so that we can see our angle better. And this is a good tool for creating images of your data or of your workflow process. So now we can see that that angle has changed to be lambda, then epistheon, then bezion, exactly what we wanted. So if we navigate back to the markups module, we can see our final measurements here for our angle and our length, and our angle is 155.5 degrees. So before we finish, I have one final tip to show you, and that's just to really use the volume rendering module when you're placing points, especially on sutures. The visibility is way better, and as you can see, those sutures are much clearer, much darker than on that segmented model we were placing our points on before. So you can still adjust those points even at this point in the process. So when you navigate back to the markups module, you can see our final length and angle measurements right there. So we went over it in detail today, but it's actually a pretty simple and quick task. Uh, and so that concludes our video. I just want to say thank you so much to the 3D Slicer team for making this awesome software free for everyone to use. And if this was helpful, subscribe below for more tutorials from our lab. Thanks.